Today I present a new method to save energy in greenhouses based on internal circulation of air and a dehumidification unit. We did this uh, research together with some uh, developing uh, companies, some suppliers of the Dutch greenhouse industry. I will um, focus on uh, the use of screens in cooperation with the use of dehumidification. In theory, uh, energy screens can reduce the energy consumption of a greenhouse with about 70%. The other 30% um, is lost by transpiration, so insulation screens do not have an effect on that. Uh, however, there's a, an influence of the dehumidification method and the use of screens, and today I will focus on that. In the traditional greenhouse, we have to get rid of uh, moisture by pulling slits in our screens or by using porous screens. And that uh, costs a lot of extra energy. We developed a new method to dehumidify with a, uh, with a reason to get a better use of our insulation screens. First of all, the old traditional method in a traditional greenhouse, you have an energy screen. In many Dutch greenhouses, we use artificial light, and the, the lamps produce a lot of heat, 100 watts per square meter, usually. We have to get rid of that heat, and that's why we are pulling slits, openings in the screens to get rid of that. And together with that, we also remove the moisture of the crop through those slits. A negative aspect of that is that uh, some slits will allow cold air to drop down into the crop, into the canopy. Because if you take air out, we also have to supply air. And that the cold air drops down and that makes it very necessary to use some heating pipes underneath the crop to raise the temperature in the lower part of the canopy. And believe it or not, but even in, in the middle of the summer, these pipes are 50 degrees centigrade to get a very uniform temperature distribution. So altogether, we have to get rid of the heat of the lamps as well as the heat of the pipes. There's another aspect of slits that's negative. If you have a cross section of a greenhouse, and you have wind on this side wall, the wind will go over the roof and it creates a vacuum right here. And that pulls out warm air. At the same time, again, fresh air needs to be introduced and that will be done at the other end of the bay, 100 meters further away. And here we have cold air again coming down. And the air will move from one side of the greenhouse to the other side. And that creates uh, very big temperature differences from uh, 5 to 8 degrees centigrade, which again costs extra energy to reduce that. So how can we improve that? Well, first of all, we would like to reduce heat losses. That's, that was our main goal. And we, we um, tried to do that by fully closing the energy screens because the slits are creating real problems. But of course then you have a lot of energy and water vapor that you have to get rid of. Um, first of all, why do we need the heating pipes underneath if we transport the heat from the lamps downwards into the crop with air movement? It saves about 50 watts that we do not have to take out of the greenhouse again. Uh, we also have to get rid of the uh, moisture, and we do that again with a fan, and I will explain later how. And because we create an, an encapsulated situation, it's very important that we maintain air movement to get a uniform distribution of especially moisture, but also temperature. Because we have no wind dropping down anymore from the slits. 
Now, this is the new method that we developed. And it's basically a combination of two fans. Here, the upper fan is introducing dry, cold air through the energy screen, which is fully closed. And here's a spreader disk, which makes sure that the cold air moves along the lamps, actually cooling the lamps. And then there's a second uh, fan that is pulling up greenhouse air, and then again with a spreader disk, distributes it over the greenhouse. And in this area, the warm air coming from the lamps is mixed with the greenhouse air, so you never have cold air coming down. This is how it looks in reality. Here you see the upper fan, and here's the lower fan. The upper fan is a multi-fan short case fan 35. Uh, delivering 2,500 cubic meters per hour. And the lower one is a V-flow fan delivering double the amount. So we have one to two to make sure that there's enough warm air mixed with the cold air. And both fans are operated separately, so you can run either fan without the other one. Then we also introduced a new screen, uh, actually two screens, one for the night and one for the uh, daytime, but both are on the same wire, so it's, it's the one or the other. Uh, and also, of course, the open, we have an open situation. I will concentrate on this one. This is the night screen XLS Luxus Svensson SL99 Revolux. And we have one of such a unit for every 250 square meters, so 40 units per hectare. These are the companies that we have cooperated with for the fans, Vostermans, the screens Luther Svensson, the climate control Hohendorn, and the grower Fresh Valley. He um, made it possible in a 2,500 square meter greenhouse to do the experiment. The results of the tests uh, are in uh, some graphs. This is a day in February, and I show here the, the use of the system. At this point, uh, 8 p.m., the screen closes, and it remains closed till uh, 7.25. So, and it's fully closed all the time. At this point, the two fans will also operate. And at midnight, around midnight, we also start the artificial light. So here we have a period without light and with light. And here you see the vertical temperature profile that we obtained. The red one is at the fruits, fruit zone. This is a tomato crop. Um, and the green one is at the plant top. And as you can see, there's hardly any difference. And actually, during the period that we are using the artificial light, it's warmer, the red line, uh, at the fruit zone than in, in the top. So we think we can even save more energy by reducing the pipe temperature further than this. But the system is functioning. That's, that's obvious, I think. When you look at the energy saving, these graphs this graph also tells something about it. This is the outside temperature, which is uh, around uh, 6 degrees centigrade outside. Here, again, you see the, the, the temperatures in cro at the crop level. And this is the, the blue line is the temperature above the screen. And the more the temperature above the screen gets near the outside temperature, the more insulation you have. So what you see here, that it's still a lot of room for improvement. And it's certainly true for the period that we are using artificial light. So there's still a lot of radiation losses through one single screen. Then the hum humidity. Um, again, fruit zone and plant top, and there's hardly any difference. And as you can also see, it's a very good control system.
when we compare this to our uh, reference house, which is at the same company, with the same crop, um, and we look at the use of the screens, then you see that um, in our um, experimental greenhouse, the, the, the black line, we have continuously closed the screen, but in the reference greenhouse, it was closed much later, and it was open most of the time. Here it's 20% opening, just to get rid of the heat and the moisture. So there's a, a big difference in the use of the screen. It's basically the same screen, but it's differently used, and that's the main reason why we have energy saving in this case. <clears throat> also, when we look at the pipe temperature, you see differences. Again, the red line is the experiment, and the green line is the reference house. Well, and it, it's very clear that uh, we had to, we needed higher pipe temperatures in the reference greenhouse. Like I said, this is one day in February, and of course we have collected data over a whole crop, but uh, this is a very typical situation. <coughs> now, um, okay, so there is different in climate. Uh, for instance, uh, the resulting climates, many growers are uh, uh, interested in VPD, vapor pressure deficit, and this is the vapor def pressure deficit, deficit for the experimental greenhouse and the upper one is for the reference greenhouse. And as you can see, if, if, if you have no lights on, there's uh, uh, a lower vapor deficit in our experimental greenhouse, which is considered to be uh, bad. But because we have very uniform temperature distribution, there's no problem with condensation, and we, we deliberately wanted to save energy by reducing the, the, um, the dehumidification. So we actually exchange much less air, resulting in a lower VPD, but without any problem. And during the light period, it's almost the same, because there's so much energy coming from the lamps that's really deciding on the result. Okay, now about the result, this is the cumulative number of harvested fruits in the experiment and as you can see reference experiment there's no difference for us this is no difference and uh, I think it can be even further improved for the new method but this was the first time we did it I come to the conclusions the um, the upper fan introduced through the screen enough dry air to keep the screen fully closed. And it, it didn't matter whether we had the lights on, yes or no. So this functioned well. The, up, the lower fan, the V-flow fan, has been pushing the heat produced by the lights uh, more than enough downwards to reduce the pipe temperature uh, at the lower end of the greenhouse. Both measures together delivered 24% energy saving uh, on a yearly basis. The new strategy resulted in a lower VPD, but as I said, we did that on purpose. And we had a slightly higher temperature when we had the lights on. I forgot to tell that, but, that's, but it's only one degree centigrade difference. Um, and it had no consequences for fruit production and quality. <coughs> so we believe that uh, if you introduce more screens, and if one of those screens is, has a luminized skin to prevent the radiation losses, if you further reduce the um, dehumidification to the minus level that is necessary for the crop, you can save very simply 50% energy compared to a standard greenhouse with one screen with slits. <coughs>